the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This past week, I spent some time looking up epitaphs. That is, that is what is written on tombstones. And I have seen and I read many, many good ones. I also saw some pretty, pretty bad ones. Um, in particular, I'm not, I'm not going to even talk about the bad ones. In particular, the, the good ones were all either about the servant's rest in Christ or about the coming of the Christ once again. We have epitaphs, of course, here. One in particular that I remember is regarding fighting the faith. Or fighting, the, running the race and winning the faith. That Christ has done His due and His duty in the waters of holy baptism and now the race has been run. Another that I saw in particular is I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. How appropriate is it that that be on an epitaph? That that be carved into stone, written with an iron pen. I am the resurrection and the life. What do you want on your tombstone? For you have sinned, and you have fallen short of the glory of God, and therefore you will die. I don't think I'm telling any secrets here. You have not loved your neighbor as yourself, therefore you have not loved Christ. You have not cared for those who are in need, therefore you have not loved Christ. You have loved yourself more than others, therefore you have not loved Christ. And then we say, well, still I'm a pretty good guy. Surely there will be a few people at my funeral. Or worse, They'll come and say, look at how wonderful they look. Never say that. <coughs> because it's just not true. They've never looked worse here on earth than when a person has died. Because that's when we see the true full force of sin. When we lay our loved ones into the grave, we see the full force of sin. That we are born in sin, thus we die. And there's not a thing we can do about it. Parents, those with child, this is why it's such a heavy responsibility to rush your children to the baptismal font as soon as possible. Let it be written on your tombstone, I am baptized into Christ. That would be enough. That would be enough. For you see, you need alien righteousness. That is something from outside of yourself to pierce into your heart and to say, you are mine. And that's where God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit does His work. For our hearts are pierced in the waters of holy baptism by the Holy Spirit. Our sins are drowned and remain stagnant at the bottom of the font, and we are erased, forgiven, washed clean, saints of God. That's another good one for your tombstone if you're taking notes. 
For me, pretty much anything Paul Gerhardt wrote, you can put on mine, and I'll be just fine with it. But in all, sit well, in all seriousness, when I think about my own tombstone and what I would have written on it, in fact, the fact that I am a sinner and that I, ha that I have fallen short of the glory of God and that just because I wear the stole of Christ does not mean that I am Christ but that I speak His Word means nothing when it comes to me living forever because I am a sinner and I sin and I have sinned against you. I've sinned against everyone. The words of my lips have not been what they should be. The thoughts in my mind have not been what they should be. And I have confessed poorly. But I speak for you as well. Your words have not been what they should have been. Your confession has faltered. Your thoughts have been stained with sin. And what comes from the heart and out of the mouth and from the tongue and the lips is but horrid sin. Therefore we pray that the words of our lips and the meditation of our hearts would be righteous in God's sight, the God who is our rock and our redeemer. And so here we have Simeon, the man who the Holy Spirit said, you will not die until you see the Lord's Christ. Now, I don't know what Simeon thought when he heard that Holy Spirit ring out those words of gospel. I don't know if he thought it was any day now or years down the road, and we don't know exactly how long it was. Nor does it matter. But let me tell you what happened to Simeon. And there before the, the Virgin Mary and Joseph, the protector of the Holy Family, Simeon went and saw the Christ child. And when he saw the Christ child, he picked him up in his flesh and in his blood and in his bone, both God and man. And he held that Christ child and he said, it is enough. It is enough that I have seen the Messiah. If my eyes have but cast upon the one who would take away the sin of the world, I can die happy, free from all sin. If I could only see the Lord's Christ, I'm ready to go. And I don't care what's on my tombstone. For in that narrow chamber, I can only be kept for so long until Christ raises us again. So there's Simeon holding the Christ and saying, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. In other words, let me die because I have seen your salvation. A light to the, to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. They're the, therefore, the one who would come to save the entire world of their sin. Not merely to the Jews, but first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And he says, I am ready to die because I have seen the glory in flesh and in blood. What shall you say? When the Eucharist, when Christ in flesh and blood is held up. When the cup of Christ 
is held up. What shall you say? What shall you think? When you hold Christ's body in your mouth and drink His blood, holding it once again in your mouth, what shall you say and what shall you think? It is enough after communion that we would die. Sins forgiven. And be with Christ. To live is nothing. To die is gain. Once you have seen the Messiah, tasted and seen that the Lord is good. We are all Simeons. We the church. Waiting for the Christ to return. Waiting to see Him descending from the clouds and the sound of the trumpet and the dead first shall rise and then we too will be caught up with Christ in the air. We too are Simeons waiting for the Christ to come in flesh and blood once again to take us into His celestial home. But until then, as we wait patiently, as we heard in the new members, right as we wait together patiently for the Lord to return it is enough that we behold Christ in flesh and in blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion and give thanks to Christ in the waters of Holy Baptism which you walk by each Sunday to receive him you, dear Christian friends, are little Simeons, beholding Christ in body and blood, washed in the water of holy baptism. I think I would like Simeon's words written on my tombstone. At least I can't think of anything better myself. Simeon's word would be perfect. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people. And that as people pass my tombstone and they see Gavin Mize and the word all peoples baptized, beloved by Christ, fed and nourished by the pelican, Christ Himself, who Himself would slice open His breast to feed His chicks. Let it be enough that the forgiveness of sins is the salvation of mankind. And therefore we eat and we drink. And once we do, we stand together as a church family. Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. And we say, after beholding the flesh and blood of the Christ, and we say, little Simeons, the word of Simeon. We sing, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Let us let that be enough. Let the tombstone people take care of the rest. For Christ, Christ has done the true work. Amen.